You know, everything that the Lord has in His Word is for us. And some things are easy and some things are blessing. Just like the other day when I helped uh, preach Randy's funeral. And I got to talk about heaven and how beautiful it is. But today I need to talk about something a little bit stronger. And it's about who we are, what we're about, and our influence. And our influence is great. And sometimes we influence for the better, and sometimes not so better. Sometimes for the worse. And at any given time, our witness is going to be positive or negative. We're always a witness. Always. And sometimes it's for the glory of God, and sometimes it's for our own glory, and sometimes it's just for the devil. Everything we say, everything we do, makes an impact on our lives, on the lives of others, and if we're part of a manual, on the part of our church. Every single thing makes an impact. Now, I can't be the one to judge your heart or to know what your heart is. That's between you and God. God knows your heart and how you conduct your life. All I can do is preach the Word of God. Joshua here is talking to Israel and he's talking about Achan and he's reminding them about the man named Achan. And how the background of this is when they were to cross over the Jordan into the promised land and Jericho was to fall, God gave them specific orders how to live. And he said all the stuff, leave it alone. At times when God will allow battles to take place and give His people victories, He would allow them to take the spoils. Sometimes it would be cattle, sometimes it would be gold, silver, clothing, whatever. But on this particular thing, God says, don't take a thing. Don't pick up anything and put it in your pocket. Don't grab something up and take it with you. And you know, sometimes we look and say, well, what a waste. Look at all this stuff here that we could use. And God said, don't touch it. Listen to what I have to say. And Achan was one of those that didn't listen to the Word of God. I don't know if I'm in the right place or not, but I dare say that each one of us have had times in our life when we didn't listen to the Word of God. We did what we thought was right. We did that which we wanted to do, whether it was right or wrong. We just have that in us at times. And it's a fleshly lifestyle. And we do what we want. Well, Achan didn't listen. And Joshua is reminding Israel about Achan and all that took place and said, here's how we need to look at our lives. Because we're going to use Achan as an example. And so let's look at him this morning. I've got three thoughts as we look at Achan and his conduct. The first thing is the iniquity of his conduct. Iniquity is another word for sin. In that verse we read, it talks about trespass. Trespass is another word for sin. And it's talking about Achan committing that trespass, committing that sin, and God was upset about it. Now we think sometimes that God just winks at our sins. But God takes it out hard. Do you always wink at things that your children do? As many of you have raised children and many of you are now raising, helping to raise grandchildren, do you always wink at the things they do and say, oh, that's all right, that's just them being kids. That's just them being children. Do we wink at things that our brothers, our sisters do? 
and say, that's just my brother, that's just my sister acting like that. Do we just look and wink at what our friends do and say, oh, that's just the old bit of Bob over here, you know? Well, God doesn't always wink, and we don't always wink, and sometimes things happen that bother us. And God was looking at Achan and looking at what he had done, and God was calling him into account, and he called it a sin. In today's world, many things are not called what they ought to be. We call abortion women's choice instead of murder. We call homosexuality an alternate lifestyle instead of what God calls it an abomination. You know, we call a lot of things by nice words to cover up how God feels. And God looks at these things and He calls them what they are. And He calls them sin. And as we think about the iniquity of Achan's conduct, it was just pure, outright sin. When God says, don't do it, and we do it, it's a sin. On the other hand, when God says, do this, and we don't do it, that also is a sin. Sometimes we look at the big sins as those things that God says, you shouldn't murder somebody, you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't lie. And we say, oh, I don't do those things, so I must not be a big sinner. But then when God says, thou shalt love, thou shalt forgive, Thou shalt serve me. Thou shalt tithe. Thou shalt do this and thou shalt do that. Do we look at those things that he tells us to do? And when we don't do them, do we look at them as sin? Sometimes not. Because to us, sin is murder and stealing and killing and all that kind of stuff like that. So we're to do the things God tells us to do and we're not to do the things he tells us to do. And he told Israel, when you go and defeat Jericho, don't take of the stuff. And yet, Achan looked down and he took of the stuff. He took of the gold, he took of some of the fine clothing. And he knew he was doing wrong. You know how he knew he was doing wrong? He took it back to his tent. And he dug a hole in the ground and he put it in the hole and hid it from everybody else. Thinking nobody would know about it. The iniquity of his conduct. It makes us hide what we're doing. But you know, God's word tells us that sin comes to light eventually. God brings it out as He chooses. And it is sin. And it is shown. The iniquity of His conduct. The second thought I had was the influence of His conduct. Wrath fell upon the whole congregation of Israel because of one man's sin. God was upset. They had a mighty army. They defeated Jericho by walking around it and shouting. And God brought the walls down and defeated them. A little town called Ai, just a little ways up the road, that was the next place for them to go and conquer. And they got this attitude, well, Ai is such a little place. We don't need to take our whole army. We're going to narrow it down. Weed them out. Just take the elite. Those that God gives us instructions to choose who's going to go into battle. 
And I think they narrowed it down to about 300 people. And they thought, well, maybe that's still too many to go up there with AI. But guess what? They went up there to that little town of AI, and they beat the socks off of Israel. Because God wasn't with them. God wasn't protecting them. They had sin in the camp. And God allowed it to happen. And in some ways, God may have even brought it about. Because His wrath was up because of the sin. And it was against the whole congregation. And so Achan's sin caused them to lose a battle of a little bitty place that they should have never lost a battle to. And many of them lost their lives. Don't ever think that your conduct and my conduct doesn't affect other people. My conduct affects my children. My conduct affects my grandchildren. Your conduct affects your children and your grandchildren. And maybe if you've got great-grandchildren, it'll affect them too. Oftentimes I walk into churches and then we look around and they say, well, preacher, we don't have no middle-aged people and we don't have no young people. Why? Let's just get down to the nitty-gritty. Because when they got through a church, and they went home when they were younger and they took their kids and they sat around the table for a Sunday dinner. What did the kids listen to? They had preacher for lunch. They had choir members for lunch. They had somebody that dressed different for lunch. They had the poor people for lunch. They had those that couldn't sing on key for lunch. And that's all the kids heard was mom and dad griping about this and griping about that. And guess what? The kids grew up and don't want nothing to do with church. I'm telling you the truth. I've seen it. I've heard it. I've talked to these young couples. I've talked to these young kids. I don't want to go to church. Why do you think young people that do go to church want a different type of atmosphere? Why do they like the praise music? Why do they like singing so much and just the word instead of everybody talking so much? Because that appeals to their heart and their spirit. And if we're going to reach the young people and we're going to reach the kids, we got to do something a little bit different. And we got to quit being negative about our church. We've got to talk positive and keep our mouths shut. Because our conduct affects others. Achan's conduct influenced the people around him. Not just his family. And we'll look at that in another minute. <coughs> but his influence on his family and upon all of Israel was negative. And God was man. When it uses the word wrath, you think God's playing no, God's not playing. The wrath of God. Guess what? I can't outdo the wrath of God. I can't change Him. I can't whip Him, beat Him. All I can do is repent and say, God, have mercy on me, forgive me for my conduct, and do not exact your wrath upon me, my family, my church, my friends upon your people. Right now, I think America suffers greatly because of God's wrath. Not because of lost people, because we expect lost people to act like lost people. We expect them to be ungodly. But I think the wrath of God is upon America because of the conduct of the Christians. Not taking a stand for what is right. Okay. Not speaking up for what is right. Not living a life that is right. Okay. And it has affected our nation. I feel for our children and our grandchildren. Many of us are at an age where we've only got a few years left. And if God tarries His return 
and these younger people are left behind, look what you're going to face. Such an ungodly world. It's a sin-sick world. Open your eyes and look at all the things that people say is okay. I read yesterday where the United Nations is wanting to go ahead and approve that it is okay to do away with such a thing as a pedophile, to do away with sex with children. They're wanting to make it legal for children to be sold as sex objects. There, the United Nations is trying to promote that you cannot criminalize abortion. You cannot criminalize selling your children into the sex market. They're trying to prove this stuff. And this is our world, folks. Do you think God is pleased with that? No way. Aiken's conduct was sinful. And it influenced others. Let me close out with one other thought. Let's look at the infliction of Achan's conduct. The infliction for his conduct. A lot of us have the attitude, don't tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. It's not going to hurt anybody but myself. The Word of God says different. <coughs> My conduct does influence others. Your conduct influences others. And as it influences others, it can cause infliction. Achan didn't just die. His whole family died. It's the Word of God. Achan was put to death, and so was his family. And many others died in these battles because of his sin. The infliction of that conduct was upon all. Let me tell you, folks, if you have the attitude that whatever I do, I can do because I want to do it, and you think it won't bring the wrath of God upon me, Somebody else besides you, you're missing it. The Word of God says different. Every action you do is going to show up in your family, in your friends, in your church, in your community, in your workplace. Let me make this a positive thing. Because I know it's pretty tough. The positive thing is when you live for Jesus, when you love like Jesus does, when you forgive like Jesus does, it makes an impact also. It brings out blessings. It'll cause others to be blessed because of you. Stay close to the Lord. I cannot, in the flesh, live a whole life. I can't, no, I cannot even in the flesh live a good life, much less holy. And in the flesh, I can't even live a halfway decent life. If I have any hope at all of living a positive, godly, holy life, I have to stay close to Jesus as I can. And there are moments when I am not as close to Jesus as I need to be, and I have to repent, and I have to draw closer. And you do too. And it is of the most importance that every day we seek the face of our Savior and say, Jesus, help me. Help me to be close to you. Help me to live for you. Help me to honor you. And help my conduct to be a blessing on my family <coughs> and upon my church and upon my friends and upon my co-workers 
uh, on everyone I come in contact with. You got to do it, folks. Aiken's conduct was awful. He disobeyed God and one little thing. Don't take of that stuff. And Aiken said, why should this gold and why should these nice clothes lay here and go to ruin? Nobody will know. But God knew. And it cost him his life and his family's life and the lives of many and the wrath of God brought upon Israel.